Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, one of my greatest friends once told me that uh, people will never remember a word that you say, which is pretty tough as a speaker. Uh, but he went on to say that they'll only ever remember how you make them or leave them feeling. So my intention is to leave you tonight feeling a little bit more inspired. Uh, but in saying that, you guys are a bunch of high achievers, and so I've got four words that hopefully we could leave together this evening. These are four words that really drive a lot of motivation for myself and my team, and to help you remember just the first two words, I want you to turn to the person next to you and tell them to do good. Go for it. <laughs> Very good. Now bring it back in. Now I want you to turn to your other neighbour, call it your least favourite neighbour that you didn't turn to the first time, a little bit awkward I know, and I want you to tell them to do better. Go for it. <laughs> Very good. So do good and do better. Uh, I love this idea that businesses who do good uh, can actually do better as a result of that. And that's my purpose or my intention uh, to share with you guys uh, tonight and this evening. Uh, my name is Harvey Penny. I'm a, a best-selling author. I was recently named one of the uh, one out, uh, 10 outstanding young persons in Australia. Uh, and I'm the co-founder of Inspire Life-Changing Accountants. Now, to set the scene, could you guys tell me what is the first word that comes to mind if I were to ask you to describe your most typical accountant? Go. Oh, okay, very good. I remember Tom saying before, like, who could find a more boring product than toilet paper? Well, here we are. <laughs> but in saying that, what I think is really cool about what we do at Inspire is that we're on a mission to become Australia's most impactful accounting firm. To date, we've saved our clients over $10 million in tax and counting which I think is pretty amazing because I don't believe that this man deserves a tip, do you? <laughs> but that's where we are today, but my story started here. Uh, it was two years ago I was blindsided by cancer. I was 31 at the time, and none of us ever want to get cancer, but I got the type of cancer for the men in the room. I got it in a place that we especially don't want to get cancer. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I had testicular cancer. Uh, I, felt, I felt a lump in my left nut. Sorry, just to get that out there. And a week later, I was in this hospital bed, having that tumour and having that left nut removed. And at the same time, my whole world was kind of crashing down upon itself because, you know, when you're 31, you've got cancer, you don't want life to kind of end. And so I asked myself this question. I want to give that question to you as a gift. And the question I wanted to ask you, and the question I asked myself on this bed, is that if today was your last day, if today was the last day that you had on this planet, on this earth, would you be happy with the life that you've left behind? Uh, call it your legacy. You see, we don't get a choice as to whether we leave a legacy or not. The decision or the difference is, is whether we'll leave a legacy that we're proud of. And the goal of tonight's session is to inspire you to both leave a bigger legacy in the future, but also uh, be able to live a beautiful legacy nowadays as well. But it was on this bed that I uh, also uh, kind of lost a part of me, uh, but also found a part of me. And that was my why uh, and my purpose. And I articulate that as to do good and to inspire others. And I hope that inspires you to think about what your purpose is. Because there's impossible, there's no way that we can run a business that is on purpose if we don't first become human beings that are on purpose. And so this is where we're going this evening. If businesses who do good do better, I want to give five little tips and five little strategies to help us do better at doing good. So step number one, we need to understand what is the situation. As of today, there are 796 million people on this planet who are living in extreme global poverty. And as a you know, numbers man myself, not an accountant, thank you, this number makes me sad. And I think about the hugeness of this problem, and I think about the SDG, the goal for this number to be zero by 2030 in just 10 years' time, and I think, wow, this is such an enormous problem. Who can we rely on out there to help us solve these problems? And so I'm curious. <laughs> Can we rely on our, like, the local governments? Or, or, or do we need to look more abroad so that the international governments, can we rely on them to solve this problem for us? Or can we rely on the churches to do it? Or, or, or even some celebrities that are out there? Is it their job? Uh, or maybe it's the royals who can do it. Or maybe we should just leave it up to our kids. They can fix it for us. 
But I actually believe that the people who are best suited to solve this major problem is you and I. And I'd love to call ourselves or start a movement of us being gold diggers. You like it? Individuals and business owners who align to the global goals and are kicking goals in all the most amazing of ways. And so number two, I want to share with you some examples of the solution. How amazing are these guys? Everyone seen Zombreros before? And you're really familiar with their plate for plate where for every burrito you buy, they give a meal to somebody in need. What a beautiful business model. We heard about who gives a crap where, you know, it's good for your bum and great for the world. Uh, I just love that. And you see that popping up in more and more cool places around Australia. Uh, what about grilled? Who doesn't love a great burger? But what happens when you get your burger? You get your little token, you get to go over and you get to choose the point at which that impact is directed. Uh, I love the guys at the Good Beer Co. Thank you so much, James, for your beer. The only issue I have with it, James, is that I've drunk enough of your Great Barrier Beer Co. to probably single-handedly restore the Great uh, Barrier Reef myself. <laughs> And so maybe we should have a look at things, but isn't this an amazing business model? We've got the amazing guys at Thank You who really forged this path for business owners, but even koala mattresses. Did you know that for every mattress you buy, you end up having the ability to adopt a little cutie like this one here? Isn't this beautiful? And then we've got these amazing people over in the United States, Warby Parker, who are kind of like the Bailey Nielsen of Australia, who do the buy a pair, give a pair, where for every pair of glasses you buy, they give a pair of glasses. And that was really forged by the cool cats at Tom's, where you'll only find me wearing a pair of Tom's shoes, where for every pair of shoes you buy, they give a pair of shoes as well. And so all these organizations inspired us, and so I wanted to share how Inspire jumped on board. Last year we were invited to head over to Necker Island to spend some time with Richard Branson and a number of other business owners. It would have been an amazing opportunity to spend 10 days there, surrounded by business owners who are real game changers in each of the industry. The premise of the week was to be able to come together, find ways that we can use our business to do more good in the world. We run Inspire, an award-winning accounting firm, and we help young families use their small business to achieve big goals. As accountants and business owners, we love crunching numbers, but recently we've found some numbers that make us pretty sad. 663 million people in the world currently go without access to water every single day. We figured that the opportunity that is Necker Island would be there for some time, but for the 1.7 million people in Malawi who are at risk of disease and even death, all for the lack of access to some safe, clean drinking water, there was really no time to lose, and so we thought we could make more of an impact by heading to Malawi than we could by going to Necker Island. So inspired by our friends at Thank You, we are launching the Give One Million Days campaign. Give One Million Days is a bold and audacious giving target for Inspire to give one million days worth of access to life-changing water to families in need. And we're launching it here today on World Water Day. Why one million days? Well, we've just turned four years old and we want to do something big. And we know big dreams do come true. Last year, we aimed to save our clients $500,000 in tax and we ended up getting $1.26 million. The coolest thing is, when we reach our goal of giving access to 1 million days of life-changing water, we're gonna hit the ground in Malawi and we're gonna bring you with us via video to see firsthand the impact that we're making. So don't forget to like our Inspire Facebook page and sign up to the Give 1 Million Days mailing list for regular campaign updates and tips on how to pull more money, time and happiness out of your business. Together we can change thousands and thousands of lives, both here and with our family in the developing nations. So, on behalf of all the people we're going to be impacting by your support of Inspire, we say thank you. Thank you. And so we started to integrate giving into little impacts that we had in our business. And that really gave birth to what we're really well known for, which is our day for dollar initiative, where for every dollar of tax that we proactively save our small business clients, we give a day of access to food, water, health and sanitation to families in need. And what I love about this idea is that not only have it, does it mean that we've saved our clients over $10 million in tax, 
but thanks to our Day for a Dollar initiative, it means we've also given over 10 million days of life-changing help to families in need in over 16 countries as of today. And so I want to just briefly take you to one of those countries, Cambodia. We went there early last year. Uh, there's my fiance, my daughter, and one of my nephews. And we wanted to see firsthand some of the impact that we were making through this giving initiative. And as a dad, I also wanted to show my kids that they kind of already live in Disneyland just by being alive here and being born here in Australia. And we went to visit some of these kids and see the conditions in which they live. And I just wanted to share with you one photo. If you look at this kid, we went out and visited where he lives, and it was hard to sort of describe what it was like, but you imagine if this was here in Australia and there were dogs where, living where this boy calls home, uh, RSPCA would come and collect the dog and they'd probably put you as the owner of the home in jail, and yet, oh, that's my little baby. <laughs> And yet this is what some people call home. And the thing that really blows me away is that my nephew, his name is Reuben, he was 10 years old. And so too is this little boy. And I look at this photo and I think about the, the injustice of, of what's out there in the world. And this crazy idea that one of these boys won the human lottery just by being born here in Australia. That was the only thing that separated these paths. And so as a gold digger, I inspire you to be able to connect your efforts in being able to correct some of these injustices around the world. Our big goal as numbers people is to be able to create one billion days or give one billion days by 2030. And that's a big number, but we've got a lot of work to do in the coming decade. And so we're going to consider number four, the limitation. I've been in business for 20 years now, and one thing I've learned in the whole business is that business is tough. Can anyone else relate to that? And I saw this quote the other day that kind of summarized it best, where it says, business is a walk in the park, Jurassic Park. <laughs> and we kind of have a giggle about that because we understand some of the challenges. But if we look at the state of small business right now, the majority are struggling. Of this 2.1 million businesses in Australia, 60% of them are either making less than 200K, they aren't profitable, they're losing money, or they can't afford a team. What good can we do for others if we're not even able to look after ourselves first. And so that's why we've wrote, written the book Cashed Up and I've actually bought a, a copy of the book as a gift along for, for everyone here tonight. And I hope that can be a gift towards your journey in accelerating your way to getting cashed up. Uh, not so you can fly private jets and, and buy Ferraris, uh, but so you can use your business for good. So I hope you enjoy that gift. <clears throat> I'm about to play one more video that sort of shows the urgency of times, but we've got one more gift that kind of Oprah style is actually sitting underneath you in your chair. So when this video is on, let's have a look and see what you can find uh, as a little surprise beneath you.
So if you had a look under your, underneath your seat, you would have found yourself a, a little gift. Uh, it's worth a thousand bucks and it's going to help really kickstart your journey to becoming wildly profitable uh, so we can use those profits for good. Uh, but let's finish off with number five, the motivation. Let's look back at some of these businesses that we first looked at their business model and thought, oh wow, that's cute. And let's see the financials of these businesses and how proving how businesses who do good can actually do better, not just for the world and for its people, but also for itself and its founders. We spoke about Warby Parker, the eyeglass company. They have 1,200 retail stores, 60, oh, sorry, 63 retail stores, 1,200 employees, and a rumored valuation of 1.2 billion with a B, and they're a glass company. And my question to you is, do you think the world needed another eyeglass company before Warby Parker came on the scene, and yet they've been able to unlock all this value by living a business that is aligned to their own values? What about Tom's? Well, they've given over 60 million pairs of shoes, and they were bought for $625 million. But I question you, did the world really need another shoe company before Tom's was around? but yet they've been able to create all this value by living true to their own values. And what about Zembreros? 23 million meals, and that was an old figure, but Dr. Sam Prince, who's behind the empires, were $294 million from Zembreros alone. And did the world need another Mexican restaurant before Zembreros was on the scene? And yet they've been able to create all this value by living true to their values. And we heard about uh, who gives a crap, $1.2 million to charity, and that is 50% of what they've earned. Thank you, $5.8 million to charity, and they've done some amazing things. And so if businesses want to do, or if businesses who do good do better, there's five quick things that we can do to make sure that we do better at doing good. And so to finish, I think we need to realize the times that we're living in. These times are exciting and there's no time to lose. But these times are very different in, to the times that have gone through in the past. These are times where happiness is the new rich, where inner peace is the new success, where health is the new wealth, and kindness is the new cool, and ultimately I believe that good is the new great. So thank you. <laughs>